Now up next we have um, Adrian Adezito, who is the National Legislative Director for the Disabled American Veterans. Adrian, can you hear me? Adrian, are you with me now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can uh, you hear me? Yeah, we got a little delay going back and forth, but I think we're going to be fine. Now, Adrian, what are some of the, in your line of work, what are some of the main areas of concern for um, the, the quality of life issues for veterans? Well, as you heard from, uh, from Alan and, and Rosie and, and Alan's sister, uh, one of the major issues that, that a lot of these uh, young men and women that are coming back from wars in Iraq and Afghanistan are are basically rehabilitating themselves, uh, getting back uh, as much of their life as they can so that they can leave a, a full and productive life. Uh, one of the, uh, the issues that was, was uh, uh, touched upon here and there uh, real deals with uh, uh, family caregivers, which is a role that uh, Rosie and, and uh, Alan's sister fell into. Yes. No, I, I, think, I think for sure that's uh, an issue that is kind of behind the scenes and, and many times people don't uh, recognize that right when they look at the situation. What, I guess, what, uh, what programs are in place for, for caregivers of disabled American veterans? Well, uh, with regards to um, uh, programs and services that are offered through a, a federal agency called the Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, they currently have um, some really limited services because uh, the agency hasn't, um, hasn't adjusted its posture with regards to this, this uh, issue, uh, family caregivers. It's really a new phenomenon because of the way health care is being delivered now. Yeah. Uh, so what we're trying to do, uh, our organization, the Disabled American Veterans, is um, is attack this issue, and uh, and try and get Congress to move on uh, legislation that will help, uh, uh, whether it's a parent that's a family caregiver or a sister or even a, a spouse or a or a child, is to provide uh, the services that a family caregiver will need, whether it's financial, even health or homemaker services. Or even respite care. Respite care is, is um, allowing uh, the agency to uh, take care of the veteran while the caregiver, whether it's a spouse or, or the parent, is able to take time for themselves to, um, to uh, I guess, take a break and, and um, take care of themselves for a while since it's extremely hard work to take care of veterans that are, are coming back very severely injured. Okay. Adrian, what, what's the best way that our audience or the public can educate themselves on these issues and get involved? Well, you know, we actually, uh, the Disabled American Veterans started a really new initiative called Stand Up for Vets. Okay. Uh, we actually have a website for it, and I think it's on your uh, solutions page, which we really appreciate you, uh, you doing that for us. Oh, for sure. The, the uh, Stand Up for Vets initiative is really an advocacy and um, an awareness initiative. It's targeted towards the, um, the American public as well as uh, policymakers. And uh, what it, uh, the, the main issues that uh, it tries to deal with is one, caregivers, uh, the issues surrounding caregivers and helping them support severely uh, disabled veterans. The other uh, issues, uh, I guess, uh, may have come across this show is a, a prevalent condition called traumatic brain injury. Yes. Uh, well, and um, and what uh, has been caught uh, in the media as well as uh, as the folks up in Congress is a severe type of uh, uh, traumatic brain injury. What isn't being discussed necessarily, or what we believe isn't uh, being uh, addressed uh, with as much at attention as uh, needs be, is the mild to moderate forms of traumatic brain injury. It's very hard to detect these, uh, even with the, um, the technology we have today. Yes. Uh, the other uh, issue is uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and um, finally, I th and the biggest bear in the bunch, I think, is uh, um, to provide VA with uh, adequate, sufficient, and timely uh, funding. Yeah. You know, for the last 12 of uh, 13 years, I believe, uh, VA hasn't received its funds on time. Yeah. 
And what happens is when you have a huge healthcare system like VA and, and you don't get your money on time, it makes it very hard to create programs to support uh, veterans like Alan. Yeah, and even. Uh, I'm sorry? No, I was just saying it, to be proactive. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And and if if I were to say uh, anything to anybody that's watching this or has any interest in, in getting involved, is to check out uh, our either our website or our Stand Up for Vets uh, website. Okay. Oh, for sure. Uh, thank you for your time here today, Adrian. We'll be sure to, to push people onto your website along with our solutions page. Uh, we Thanks, Shannon. Appreciate your input here today. Thanks, Shan. You're It's a great show you got here. I hope you guys go on for a while. Vote for us and stay tuned. <laughs> Thanks.